question. Hi. speak with you about future because you are the future you your generation you are the future and a special future because you are entering life in a time of big changes and these changes you can describe in different ways you can some people describe these changes as the fourth industrial revolution fourth industrial revolution is the one that is happening today, which each of you, when the processes and the scientific discoveries that were made, let's say, 100 years ago by great physicists, mathematicians, are becoming a part of our life. Who has a mobile phone? Put your hands down. Who doesn't have a mobile phone? Everybody has a mobile phone, looks like, yes? You know, when I was young, nobody had a mobile phone. There were, not every family had even a normal phone, not speaking about the mobile phone. But do you realize that this is a completely different world with even a simple gadget like the mobile phone? And you take it for granted that it's normal to take your mobile phone, to go into WhatsApp or Facebook, and call, to call someone in Australia or in Argentina, have a chat. But can you imagine, some 20 years ago, this was not possible at all. And if 40 years ago you would tell someone that you can have a video conference or talking to someone live on your small gadget, they would think this is science fiction. By giving this lecture, I would like to devote this lecture to a Japanese writer that I admired when I was young because his books were translated into Russian and I could read. His name was Kenzaburo Oe. Who has read books of Kenzaburo Oe? One, two, three, four. <laughs> I, let me give you an advice. These books are, <laughs> even today, they are absolutely modern. This is someone that 50 years ago could describe your life today with a quiet accuracy. How can this happen? So you have to have someone which is very knowledgeable and also wise that can describe the future. And one of the greatest guys that did that was Japanese writer Kenzaburo Oya. And I was growing, when I was young, reading his books with fascination. They were as interesting as any literature, but this was taking me to the future. To be honest, I would like someone to take me to the future today as well. To come with you for another, to live with you another 50 years, and then come back. I mean, can you imagine what I will tell you going back, forward in 50 years and coming back? I think that will be great advantage. Do you agree? Yes. Can you imagine someone before Microsoft knowing that software is going to be more powerful than hardware? Bill Gates didn't fly 50 years ahead and then didn't come back in order to understand that he has to develop a software disk operational system called DOS and then sell it to IBM, the biggest IT company in the world. But the moment he did that, what happened? I became smaller, IBM became smaller and smaller and smaller, and Microsoft became bigger and bigger and bigger. So this is a vision looking 
to the future. The same happened with the great creators of Google. The same happened with the creators of Facebook. So if you know we are all heading, then you will be successful. Because somehow you will start doing the things that will be needed when? Tomorrow. I'm so happy that we all agree that understanding and knowing the future is important. And let me try, together with you, have a trip to the future. And then we'll come back and decide what to do. Definitely the life in the future will be very different very different. And let me take one aspect of this life. Let's take industry. Japan is one of the leading countries in the industry. And people speak about fourth industrial revolution when we are creating equipment which has the size of nano, where we are thinking and talking about quantum computers, when everything is getting and moving very fast. But it's also changed the whole industry. Somebody in my life, a couple of years ago, says that making a car in the future will be easy. Because the car of the future will be consisting of three things. Four wheels, one battery, and the software. Indeed, the future electric cars will not have the complexity of transmission, burning petrol, converting the energy of the petrol into movement and so on and so forth. It will be just one big or small but powerful battery. Connected to that, four wheels, and usually running it with a software. So, entertainment. Your small gadget is a source of entertainment, am I right? It's not only a source of information, but it's a source of entertainment. So what's the biggest entertainment in the world? Can anybody tell me? Who knows? Okay, let's put, give me big uh, international entertainment examples. Please. YouTube. YouTube. Uh -huh. Fantastic. What else? Please. Netflix. Netflix. Okay. Somebody else? Facebook. Baseball. Facebook. 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 Fine. Disney World, you? Sorry? Ah, <laughs> fine. Well, I will give you another one. Football. That is the biggest physical entertainment. Yes, Facebook. Yes, YouTube. Yes, yes, Netflix. These are all fine. These are virtual entertainments. Am I right? But on the physical one, it's, football is one of the biggest in the world. But do you know that today, today, watching two guys playing electronic football has as many viewers as an ordinary football, which is fa fascinating. Two guys, one in Los Angeles, the other one in Sydney, playing football with each other and taking and uh, the players like Ronaldo, Messi, putting in their virtual teams playing each other, and there are thousands of others that are watching this. Why? Because computer games, computer entertainment, they are interactive. So what is that we like? We like entertainment, but you we like more the one which is what? Interactive, where we can have a contribution. The virtual life will become more and more important. You'll spend more time in virtual life. Because when you look at even entertainment, you like which one? You like the one which is interactive, like a game. And the way the boy or the girl born in 2020 will exercise his or her right of freedom or democracy through not only the ballot, but through the Facebook. And that boy or girl will exercise that not once in five years, but it will exercise when? Every day. I think, I don't like this politician because he is not saying the truth. What will happen 
more and more even political life, the business that I'm in now will become interactive and dependent on technology. So in order to know are people approving me or not, I have to look at the Facebook. But that's a complex story because there are, there's a lot of what there? Fake. In order to make it cleaner or make it effective, you will need again what? Mathematical modeling. Artificial intelligence. Because mathematics in the future and in very near future, when you make a photo or a video of a speech of a person, like politician, artificial intelligence will make a note nearby. He's true, he's not lying. Or he will say, he's lying, he's lying, be careful. Because mathematical modeling, taking the face of individual people and knowing that person, and by following that person can judge, are you saying the truth or you are lying? Artificial intelligence will follow you every day, every moment, and will provide you with a lot of information. In many cases, analyze the information that you require. So it will change the way the industry is run. It will change the way the cars are made. It will change the way we will use entertainment, because it will be interactive. It will change the way we will learn and educate at school, at university, it will change our health, so it will change the world. And every in each nation will go through huge changes. The big industrial states, like in this country or in America or in Germany, they have to transform themselves. Why? Because no longer you will sell a car, you'll probably sell the know-how of the car that will have the value. So the world will be changing. And our national interests will be different. And through our national interests, the geopolitics will change. Because we will have different interests. Will it not be the same? Because what will be making more, becoming more important is not how much gold you have, or how much oil you have, but what will make more, become more important, how much brains you have and how much knowledge you have, and how much knowledge power you have. So how smart you are, how quick you are, how much you are ready to fight for your cause. So individual, human values will become more important. And we have already started that. Look at the new world. This new world is a world of startups. Younger people, that star have an idea, good education, devotion, hard work, they know what's happening in the world, they have like Kenzaburo Oye, the ability of looking to the future, so they can design and run a startup that will become the next Google, or the next app. And I hope one of you, or 10 of you, well, everybody here will be the ones that will be the leaders of the next world. As I started telling you that I would love to be together with you in the future and come back, I'm offering you to start your life journey with a mental journey, virtual journey, going to the future and coming back. The moment you will have the right feeling or the vision where the world will be, you will know where you have to go and what you have to do in order to be very successful. And as we discussed with you, in every piece of activity that you will start, be that in culture, be that in music, be that in business, health, everywhere, you will be going together with big data and its management, mathematical modeling, and artificial intelligence. And don't be afraid of artificial intelligence. I have gone through, and generation of mine have gone through the same thing 40, 50 years ago, when everybody was afraid of computers. They were saying, ah, oh, computers will come, everybody will lose the job, then people will not have jobs because the accounting, accountants will lose their jobs or simple uh, working will uh, lose their job. But in reality, what happened 
with computers, hundreds of millions of new jobs were created. So with artificial uh, intelligence, hundreds of millions of new jobs will be created, and you will get them if you are ready. And the last thing about my country, it's a small country, around here, three and a half million people living in Armenia. But we are a nation of 21st century, because there are four or five times more Armenians living abroad. Small state, global nation. What do you think? It's an advantage or not in 21st century? Of course it is, because it's a global network. People belong to the same coast, the same nation. Now, it's a very old nation. The capital city of Armenia is called Yerevan. The Yerevan is 2,801 years old. We know exactly when it was born because we have the record of the Armenian king, Argishti, that with his order the city was established 2,800 years ago. So it's a very old nation. A nation that has gone through big difficulty in its life. A nation that has suffered. And if you know the history, maybe you will find in the history books or in the Google, Master Google, that we suffered also around 100 years ago a big genocide in the Ottoman Empire. But also you will find that these are people who are survivors, fighters. People that can lose and, or fell down and stand up again. That's a quality that you need in the future. Not be afraid of losing. Not be afraid of defeat. Not be afraid of being bankrupt. You're bankrupt once in your business, or bankrupt twice, doesn't matter. In order to make the right decisions, you have to learn and make the wrong ones. Don't be afraid of making wrong decisions. Be afraid of not making any decision. Very important in your life. I think if you don't make any decision, you will get nowhere. Neither good or bad. So make decisions. If they are wrong, life will teach you. And you will become smarter. Because you have made already five wrong decisions on the same subject. The sixth one will be the right one. So don't be afraid. And I'm representing a nation, a small one, hard work, very hard life. But we were also a nation with big history, and Armenians were traders between East and West. You go back thousands of years, and you can find Armenians not only in Japan, but you can find them in Singapore. They have founded the most famous and uh, the first uh, hotels in Singapore. You find them in Calcutta, in, in Bombay, in, uh, in, Iraq, in per old uh, uh, Persia 2,000 years ago, you go back in 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem, or in Bukhara and Samarkand, Uzbekistan, Armenians were always traders. And they are worldwide. So, it's a small nation, but today in 21st century, it's, it also has a chance. And I would say to you as well, I feel myself as the president of a new startup. Startup nation, a nation that is starting in 21st century, a nation that has the chance of becoming successful. That every startup, boys and girls starting something, they believe that they will be successful. I believe that my country will be successful. And the example, historic examples are there. Why a landlocked country like Armenia can become successful? Because it can become a port in the ocean of data. It can become a port, a center of mathematics and artificial development. So, in the new world where half of the world is virtual, you can become a port of information, a port of data, a port where they process data. The data comes in, the data goes on. The tankers come in, the tankers go on. So as a nation, as a state, we have a chance. We have a chance if we work hard, if we have the right vision, if we have discipline, because in the ocean of data, small Armenia can become successful. And it all starts with the vision for the future.
And I'm trying to share with you, like both Japan, huge country, very successful, and small Armenia, again historic country, very successful and also tragic, like Japan, country that has learned how to fell down and stand up again, two nations, they can be both successful in 21st century. The 21st century which is going to be different. Where the most and more Im most important way of living and transportation will not be the physical one, will be the, the ocean of data. And your determination, hard work, belief. So I would like to thank everybody for your attention. Well, thank you very much. I hope to see you, some of you in Armenia. And I wish you all the success, because you deserve it. And we, whenever you will do something nice in your life, remember about a Japanese great visionary, Kenza Burooye. And I suggest you, you read it. Thank you very much.